In this video, I will attempt to explain what a drag truss or a drag beam or a drag loaded beam or even a collector beam, whatever you're going to refer to it as. And basically what this beam is going to do will be to provide some type of resistance from strong winds that will be applying massive amounts of pressure to either side of the building and then transferring that load through the beam and then through the shear wall into the the building foundation. So if we just had the beam without the wall, we might not get very much resistance. However, we are going to get some resistance because any amount of pressure that's going to be applied to this side can be transferred through the beam and then distributed to the other side. So the beam without the wall is going to provide us with something. However, the wall will definitely increase the amount of resistance. And that's usually what you're going to be looking for if you're talking about any type of drag load. And of course, you are going to need a structural footing for this so that you can install your hold down anchor bolts along with any other anchor bolts you need to firmly secure the bottom of the shear wall. And don't forget, in some cases, the hold down bolts will be quite long. And in some cases, you might require four by sixes or even six by six posts to increase the structure strength of the shear wall. So not too difficult. We have a rigid structure that's connected to a rigid building foundation that is going to reduce the amount of the forces applied to each side of the building. And in some cases you are going to use a roof truss to transfer the drag load from one wall to the other wall or from one section of the house that needs a little more stability to a structural shear wall. And try to avoid looking at this truss as as something you're going to find as a standard model because a drag truss could be two trusses nailed together or even three and will probably require some type of structural building hardware to connect it to the other wall framing components like the exterior wall. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the shear panel and again this might not be the same design you're going to be working with but here we have a structural piece of plywood that is about a half inch thick and will have nails going all the way around the perimeter of the plywood and then of course nailing into the other truss components and the wall framing studs and it won't be uncommon to use some type of building hardware and here is another example of the structural hardware being used to attach the truss to the upper wall framing plates so again, not too difficult. The load is going to be transferred through the truss and then through the shear wall into the building foundation. And I would also like to point out that additional building fastening and connectors might be required to transfer the load through the ceiling or through the roof sheathing and then to the perimeter of the exterior walls. So hopefully by now you learned a little more about drag connectors and roof trusses so that you can now be be the job site know-it-all, or at the very least would have learned a little more about structural engineering. 